When you have completed this exercise, you should understand how many type 1 topo isomerases can increase the linking number of a DNA molecule by cleaving one strand of the DNA, passing the other strand through the NIC, and ligating the NIC strand. Note, this animation provides an example of the reaction pathway used by many, but not all, type 1 topo isomerases. These type 1 topo isomerases can only bind to segments of DNA in which the two strands are melted, that is, segments where the strands have separated. One of the DNA strands binds in a cleft in the type 1 topo isomerase, placing it near the active site tyrosine. The active site tyrosine becomes deprotonated, probably by a nearby basic amino acid residue. The result is a negatively charged oxyanion. The oxyanion attacks the phosphate group at the 3' prime position of the nearest deoxyribose, producing a DNA 3' prime phosphotyrosyl enzyme intermediate and a 5' prime hydroxyl polynucleotide. The hydrogen atom on the 5' prime hydroxyl is probably donated by a nearby acidic amino acid residue. After cleavage, the enzyme undergoes a large conformational change. This conformational change opens up a gap in the cleaved strand, with the enzyme bridging the gap. The uncut strand then passes through the gap, binding to a pocket in the middle of the enzyme. Binding this strand causes the topoisomerase to change conformation again, closing the gap in the nicked strand. The topoisomerase then ligates the nicked strand by reversing the cleavage reaction. Finally, the topoisomerase undergoes another conformational change, opening up and releasing the DNA. Overall, the reactions catalyzed by the have added one twist to the